Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be resurrecting this Oppo Find X smartphone. It has sustained damage to both the OLED display panel and the outer glass with massive deep scratches. This phone must have really seen some abuse. Like the OnePlus 7 Pro I recently repaired, this Oppo also has a pop-up camera system, although this one is currently jammed. With it only coming up a few millimeters before getting stuck on one side. We'll have to see what is going on when we open up the phone. The back of the phone appears to be new, so it's likely someone has attempted a repair on this phone in the past. There is a minor gap at the bottom where this new back panel hasn't been fitted correctly. As this is my first Oppo phone repair, I'm interested to see how repairable this phone is and what it looks like on the inside. Without further ado, it's time to get this back panel removed. I'll start by heating up the phone on a heat plate for a couple of minutes at 120 degrees to help soften the adhesive holding on the back panel. Thanks to the gap down at the bottom, this made my job even easier as I didn't even need to apply a suction cup to help lift up the back panel. I could simply insert the plastic pick and work it around the edges of the phone. As the whole top of the phone slides out, there isn't any adhesive at the top. Instead, the adhesive only goes about three quarters of the way. Lifting up the back, we're greeted with this mess. However, now that we're inside, we can get a closer look at what could be potentially jamming the pop-up camera. It appears to only be jammed on the right side. At a closer inspection, you can see someone has applied adhesive over the camera assembly while installing the back panel, and this has been stopping the camera from extending out. With it removed, you can see the mechanism is now working. Not only was the adhesive preventing the camera from extending, but there's currently three types applied. You have the original adhesive which has not been removed, liquid adhesive, and regular tape adhesive. I'm going to remove it all before you begin to make things easier. By the looks of it, the tape adhesive had been applied as the liquid adhesive hasn't held the back on properly. I've had issues with liquid adhesive in the past and found it only holds for a few months before coming loose. Of course, if you apply a significant amount, it will hold, but in a lot of cases, that just isn't an option. One thing I noticed is Oppo included a little hidden Find X logo inside the device, which you'll never see from the outside. As this phone has a camera mechanism that extends, disassembly is slightly different than what you'll find in a lot of other smartphones. After removing the first plastic bracket, we'll need to dislodge the camera assembly. To do that, we'll first start by disconnecting the battery and start unrouting the two antenna wires that run up the sides. These are sitting in their own little channel which allows them to have a little bit of slack so when the camera assembly moves up and down, the cable can move freely. Once those are disconnected, I can remove this bracket which connects our camera assembly to the motor. This will allow us to remove the assembly from the phone. Lifting it up and out of the way, there are still two ribbon cables underneath, but this will allow us to access the several screws we'll need to remove to get the motherboard out. Having unfastened these screws, we can now remove the second plastic bracket. This needs to be carefully removed as there are two antenna wires running over the top. With it removed, we can disconnect the remaining antenna wire and start unplugging any other flex cables that are connecting to the motherboard. With that, we can fold up the camera assembly once again, remove two more screws, and our whole motherboard will freely come out. From here, we can remove our battery. Thankfully, there is a nice handy pull tab which actually works. Once we fully remove the battery, we can move back up to the top of the phone where I'll remove the motor which is responsible for controlling that motorized camera mechanism. Next is this track system which will need to be unfastened. We also can't forget about this little hidden antenna in the frame, which we'll need to transfer into our new frame. With that, it's now time to proceed to the lower portion of the phone where I'll remove these nine Phillips head screws, which will give us access to the charging port assembly. After removing the speaker, I can remove a couple of pieces of foam from the battery compartment that are covering up several wires that we'll need to access. To remove this daughter board, we'll first need to remove the SIM card tray, one flex cable, and one Phillips head screw. With it out of the way, we can now detach the display cable and remove its extension cable. This proved challenging as the end connector is glued into place, making it more difficult to remove. 
Using some alcohol, I was able to free it. Proceeding, I can remove the charging port cable from the phone. Lastly, are these volume and power buttons. Usually the housing will come with these, but for some reason mine didn't. And I wasn't really sure on how to get these out. I tried using tweezers, but lesson learnt, don't use tweezers. Instead, use a flathead screwdriver as they come right out really easily. As I used tweezers initially, I wasn't able to get two of them out. So I had to get a little bit creative. After removing the buttons that I could, I decided that the best way to get these out without damaging them was to cut the frame. This allowed me to salvage both of these retaining clips, which I'll need for our new housing. With them removed, I can finally get all of the buttons out. You can see I caused quite a bit of damage to the frame, but this is the old one, so it doesn't even matter. Speaking of frames, here's our new one. Complete with adhesive and a new display, this cost me 320 Australian dollars. Displays have really gotten expensive in the last few years. An LCD screen for an old iPhone is about $35. So it's no wonder why some people don't get their modern devices fixed. Either way, for this Oppo, that isn't going to be the case. I'll start by reinstalling the power and volume buttons that we removed previously. These went in without any issue and our old plastic retaining clips worked just fine. Next to go in was our USB-C charging port, which I cleaned out the remaining fluff inside the connector before reinstalling it into the casing. After aligning it correctly, I can then get our daughter board reattached by simply lining it into position, fastening the one Phillips head screw and reconnecting its flex cable. From there, it's time to reattach the display extension cable, which is adhered into place. And once that is complete, we can reconnect the display's cable. Fastening back into place our speaker assembly, the lower portion of the phone is complete. In the middle section, I'll need to apply the foam tape to these cables in the battery bay, as well as a piece on the side to secure the antenna wires into place. Up at the top, I'll need to reinstall the tracks for the camera mechanism before reinstalling its motor. Simply adhering it back into place, it's time to reattach our motherboard. Whilst we lifted the motherboard and camera assembly up as one piece, they can be separated and the camera can be replaced if necessary. With it seated into position, it's now time to reconnect all of the flex cables and antennas back into place. One interesting design choice with this phone is that these two antenna wires route over the top of the plastic piece. Whilst it doesn't impact on the repair, it can be a little bit of a nuisance. However, once it's into position, I can fasten all of the Phillips head screws back into place. Before I secure the camera mechanism, I wanted to give it a clean, as it's a little bit difficult to clean once it's properly installed. After brushing out all of the dirt and grime, I can reattach it back onto its sled. Next, I'll install the plastic pieces which help route the antenna wire going to the top section of the phone. I'll do this for both sides, securing each of the Phillips head screws in place. Once that's done, I'm going to test out the phone. I'll reattach the battery and see if our screen works. Powering it up, you can see thankfully we get an Oppo boot screen and everything is functioning fine with the display. I'll give the camera mechanism a good wipe down before reattaching the bracket which secures the motor to the camera mechanism itself. Proceeding, I'll remove all the protective film over the battery adhesive to reinstall the battery. The battery itself sits in this plastic cradle which is what actually adheres to the adhesive below. Not only does this mean the battery is secure in place, but it also makes it easy to remove. Once that's installed, the last plastic bracket will be fastened down into place. The last thing we'll need to do is reattach the glass panel. But before we can do that, I'll need to clean it off and remove all of the residual adhesive using a spudger. Wiping it down with some isopropyl alcohol, it's now ready for installation. Of course, we need something to hold the two together and adhesive is just what we need to do it. 
I'll be using tape-based adhesive and applying it around the edges of the phone. This phone isn't water resistant, so purchasing a pre-cut adhesive template isn't necessary. Unlike the previous repairer, I will ensure not to apply the adhesive to any moving parts so that the camera can still function. After it's applied, I can remove all of the protective film over the adhesive and simply line up and press our back panel into position. After it's pressed down into place, the last thing we'll need to do is remove the plastic protective film from the top of the phone, and we're done. So this is it, the Oppo Find X. Another phone proving there's no excuse for a notch or hole punch camera. I find the design interesting, but strange at the same time, as the lack of any visible cameras. But not having a camera bump or obstruction to the edge-to-edge -edge screen is a win in my opinion. Whilst an expensive repair, it was pretty straightforward with no implementations of any anti-repair mechanisms that I could find. So it seems like a decent phone overall. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. Also be sure to check out my new online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.